Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Raptors Weekly Podcast. Now the question is, will I be doing Raptors Weekly Podcast now that they're out? Probably. I'll probably more focus on the NBA um, until the finals is all done. Talk about a bunch of things, whatever, whatever. But um, this podcast is about a team who has been officially eliminated. Um, well, was official on like. Wednesday, but a team that we all know and love. It's been about a week, not a new, this hasn't been a full week, but it's been more than five days. I don't really have set things to talk about. I have, uh, I I just filmed um, two videos where one, I spoke about the, you know, the five things that derailed the Raptor season. Uh, It's my instant thought. Maybe I may change my mind later on, but it's like the five things I felt like really changed the Raptors season. And like at, at, at number one, uh, I made just a full-fledged like soliloquy, another video just basically saying like how much that number one thing was the issue. And that's the one thing that they can't do going forward. Um, when we talk about identity, we talk about the change in a, a lot of things. It's the one thing that we just can't have uh, continuing on for the Raptors. We just can't. It's something that we have to see improve. Um, and I'll say, make sure you tune into that this week when I uh, dive into all that. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe, follow on all platforms. Please watch the TikTok. Um, it's always funny that my TikTok views get more views than my YouTube, but sometimes just that's the way I think the algorithm is. Whatever, whatever. Um, it is what it is, but definitely check out the TikTok Raptors, um, those guys sports, of course, uh, where I focus on like a lot of things, but yeah, uh, um, Let's we can start off because I have no agenda for today. I just kind of wanted to speak a little bit. Even my other two videos, it was mostly just me speaking from the heart and speaking from what I was thinking. And, you know, in speaking from the heart and then talking about this team, the one thing I, I'm going to say is, you know, Raptor fans, you know, I think like I said last week, I, I'm like, I'm not too sure if this team is going to win this game. Because at the end of the day, I believed in Damar and Zach Levine. You know, we always talk about how talented the Raptors are. Like, we talk about it a lot. Oh, this team is so talented. This team is this and that. But when it came, it came time to, like, show how talented the Raptors team is, they, didn't, they weren't that talented, right? You know, if you did a draft of the Raptors in Chicago and it was, like, a top 10, I'm pretty sure the Raptors would have had, like, maybe six guys that you would have picked, you know? If, if I'm randomly doing it right now, maybe for some people, number one pick would be uh, Zach Levine. Um, maybe t- two is Pascal. Three is DeMar. So that's already, right? So and then you would probably have Scotty, Fred, OG. Uh, then you're probably going Gary before Patrick uh, Williams. And then you're probably going, no, sorry, you go Vucevic. Then you go Gary. Um, and then you go... So I said Patrick Wool, but you, yeah, you may go maybe Pirtle, and then Patrick. So we go six out of the f- six to four. You know, will be Raptor players, and uh, maybe I'm being biased as a Raptor fan, but all, all in all, you're thinking this Raptor team is good. If you go down the line, even through the bench, you're thinking of Boucher. Uh, it's gonna be better. Um, Barton really didn't play, but you're thinking Boucher, Precious. Uh, like I said, Gary was off the bench too. So you're thinking those three guys are gonna do well. But all in all, it just didn't happen. You know, I talked about it in my TikTok video. Pascal missed those those clutch uh, free throws, and it sucks. But I actually don't blame him. I think he had a pretty good uh, game. Uh, took over when needed. Now, in, in saying that beautiful line, is that he still missed the shots, and he, of course he has to be held accountable for those. And um, but all in all, the whole team missed shots. And uh, for any fan who, just on a side note, any fan who talked to. Uh, about um, Demar's daughter or threatened. Her. I hope people know. I don't think that was Raptor fans. I think it was other fans because, like, I didn't like I didn't see anything on Raptor fans talking about Demar's daughter. Once we knew it was Demar's daughter, we all just shut up. We're like, yeah, you know, we we'll leave it alone. That, that's how I saw it. Now, uh, this Raptor team, you know, they missed eighteen shots. That was the issue. They missed eighteen shots, eighteen free throws, I should say, eighteen free throws. When you miss 18 free throws, you're going to lose the game. That's a lot of free throws to miss, right? And at one point, especially in the fourth quarter, 
the energy of the team was gone. Which, of course, like I said, check out the video this week. It's one of the reasons why this team needs like a change is because guys are going all out for 44 minutes. And it's not game seven. And yes, the plans are, are, are tough. But you're hoping to like, you know, see some bench. I just, you know, I'm recording this on Sunday before the Sunday games. But watching all the Saturday games, every team pretty much went seven to eight deep. Oh, no, they went to eight to nine deep. A lot of teams like had their bench guys play 20 minutes. Gary was our lead bench guy with like 12 minutes. Like that's not a, like, how do you run like that? When you just, it's like you don't trust anybody, right? Now when you're playing this type of defense, you need, you need to have everyone, like if you want everyone to be 100%, you, you need to trust more guys. And I know <clears throat> for a lot of Raptor fans, they wanted to play like a Jeff Downton Jr., um, but of course he didn't get signed. I still felt like, no, play a Malachi. Pl play Boucher a little longer. Play a Precious. It, the problem is, once again, the problem is like the way they play their offense. Like, you know, free-flowing isn't, isn't working. But if they, if they were just more like organized in that sense, it would be better. But they really lost because the 18 free throws. And, and, uh, uh, the Raptor season ends, uh, and a lot of people say it's a miserable season. I see some people saying it's like the worst season of all time. I wouldn't say that. I don't think it's the worst season of all time. I was watching, you know, the Bosch years, the Vince years. Um, I wouldn't say it was the worst season. Like, I think a worst season, and it's based off expectation, was the season of like when we faced um, the Washington Wizards. That was a pretty bad season. I want to say that was 2015. Because that season, like, I truly believed in this team. You know? I truly believed in this team. Time, we saw like Bradley Beal dominate us. I'll never forget Bradley Beal like shooting a layup or whatever, or almost like dunking the ball, and then just looking at Kyle Lowry and going like, "You can't mess with me." The man said, "You cannot." And this was like second year Bradley Beal looking at vet Kyle Lowry and going like, "You cannot mess with me. You can't touch me." That's like. Some bars, okay? Him looking at him saying, you can't touch me. Now, I will say, Raptor fans, we lost, okay? The season wasn't great. 41 to 41, very mid. The crazy thing is, like, the way that we were going, you thought the the record would be really bad. But once we got Pirtle, this team was pretty good. Once again, if we had Pirtle since the beginning of the season, this team is probably a 46 to 48 win team which would lead you at that fourth, fifth seed competing with New York. Maybe get the sixth seed. I don't think we probably would have lost all those, all four of those Brooklyn games. Probably would have won at least one or two. Maybe would have won an Indiana game. You know, a, a game where they were, another team was using their bakes so much. You know, I think it would have been better if we had Pirtle. But, of course, we didn't. It is what it is. Now, the... the with this Raptors team and Raptor fans, I say this. You wanted to beat, you know, the Bulls, and you wanted to go face Miami or Atlanta, but at the time you, fought, you knew it was Miami. But you want to face them, and you want to beat them too. Of course, you want to make it to the playoffs. And of course, you want to win the title. The whole goal is to win the title. But what would have happened 100% if you would have beaten those two teams to make it to the playoffs. And let's say you would have won one or two games against the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks would have won because they're still arguably the best team in the league, okay? So the Bucks would have won. But if Toronto competed, all you Raptor fans that wanted to see change, I promise you, you would have saw none. You would have saw none because Masai and Bobby would have looked at it and gone like, okay, we're probably just small pieces away. Not big pieces, small pieces. Because we took the Bucks to six. We took Philly to six, and we thought that we were going to win 55 games this season. People legit thought that we were going to win 55 games because of the way we competed against uh, Joel Embiid. And they're like, oh, all we need is a center. All we need is a center. We'll be fine. Knowing the fact that we need way more. 
No, you have to be need way more than that. But they, they would have said, like, oh, that's all we need. All we need is the center. So if we went to six games with the Bucks, I'm confident that we would have believed that we would have been good enough to eventually win a title with this core. And we won't. They're not good enough. It's okay. We can admit it. I don't want to tank, and I'll probably talk about tanking later on. I don't want to tank. That's crazy. That's crazy. I, I do not want to tank at all. Now, Raptor fans were all mad and disappointed about the season and blah, 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 complained, whatever, whatever. Aren't you just glad it's done? Like, you're glad that you put so much heart, sweat, tears into this team, and it's just done. Like, this season was still, like, there was clearly problems with this team. Issues. Issues that people don't want to talk about. But there's clearly issues with this team. I'm not sure if they didn't get along. I'm not sure what happened. But this this team wasn't the same team that we fell in love with last year. You know? The team that we all thought, you know, Precious would be a center. and do da 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 You know, we'll put Gary on the bed. None of that happened. This same team that, you know, people are so disappointed and people are saying it's the most disappointing season of all time. People, yeah, because you believe that after beating or after taking Philly to six games and essentially thinking, like, you know, we would have beat them if Joel Embiid didn't hit that game winner. Like, that belief that you had, that, mind you, I had the belief that we would beat Philly too, not disputing that. But the belief that you came into the following season thinking that everything was going to be the same and you're going to be a much better team, everyone says it. You're not going to catch teams off guard. Everyone understands how you guys want to play. You want to do all that, like, you know, mismatch hunting and all the other stuff. No, they're going to play better defense around it. You know, the team just wasn't good. Also, the East was better. Brooklyn, before they traded KD and Kyrie, was a pretty good team. They probably would have been the fourth seed, okay? Cleveland got better. New York was who? Jalen Brunson, that guy, I... I told myself that Fred is better than Jalen. And I, th- I think it's recency bias to say Jalen is better than Fred. I honestly think they're probably just the same type of player. But um, he's, he's doing his thing. Shout-outs to him. Shout-outs to Jalen Brunson. Sh- definitely shout-outs to Jalen Brunson. Now, this, this team was just... When you're 41 and 41, it's you're inconsistent. Okay, you win some, you lose some. That's what Fred said. You win one, you lose one. You win two, you lose two. There's no consistency in the team. There's no fight. There's no battle. But that's why there needs to be change, right? So Raptor fans, when you look at this team and you're like, oh man, like this is a horrible season, blah blah blah. You know, good. Or we should be glad that it was a horrible season. So then the right uh, changes could be made. We can all say that you know sometimes Messiah and Bobby they kind of keep the players a little longer than some would want. But this is the time we, we got to make some trades. This is the time we got to start looking into our future. What is our future? Is it is it Pascal, Fred, and OG? Is it Pascal and um, Scotty? Is it Scotty? You have to ask these questions now. What does the future hold for uh, this team? Now, mind you, like I have like I think all season I'm gonna like come up with theories and ideas and I realized one thing I'm going to do is go through like each player not each player probably like 10 of the players maybe uh go through them um I'm probably going to have ideas every week or every other week about what I think this team should do like I have my one idea now that you know I'll say a little bit on the podcast but I'm probably gonna make a video about it now that I think about it about what this team needs but it all depends on what you plan on doing like I made a video uh, recently seeing that this team is in the middle, right? It's in the middle. You don't know what to do, tank or don't tank. But ultimately, if you still want to be good, what this team is looking for, honestly, besides the five things, and when I talk about that, first thing, make sure you watch the videos this week, they need someone who can match Pascal. You need someone, you can, of course, better... If you put someone better, that'd be, that'd be better, obviously. But Pascal is arguably a top 20 player, okay? So, unless Atlanta is really serious about trading Trey Young, which I, I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest, right now. 
But, like, unless you're getting that type of player, you, you don't know. Donovan Mitchell was a guy you could have got last year. Now, what you would have got for him, I don't know. But I don't think it would have been that crazy because the Jazz really traded Laurie and, and Sexton and traded some draft picks. I think it's Toronto did that. Like, Toronto would be in Cleveland's position right now. So, but Cleveland did the right thing. You got Donovan Mitchell. It raises your ceiling. That next series is going to be a seven-game series. And I know Cleveland lost at home, but I still believe in that Cleveland team to be good. Um, but all in all, like, you just look at it like, you know, you need someone to match Pascal. I, I, the wording I use, you need a Chris Middleton, a really good Chris Middleton. Some have said, and I know, I don't know, that's how I see it. I do think Pascal and Gary play well together. Pascal needs a guy who can, like, get a bucket. The thing with, you know, um, with Gary is that he's inconsistent. One day he'll give you this, the next day he'll give you that. I may make a future video about, you know, revisiting that, you know, Gary and, and uh, uh, Norman Powell trade. Probably because I'm a Norman Powell fan. But I, I may revisit that, maybe do a video on it. But my annoyance of it all. But Pascal needs someone, all in all, who can get the bucket. If he gets someone better, it's, it's great. But even if he had, look, the guys that we just faced, a Zach Levine, a guy that at the end of the game can get you extra buckets, a guy that can let Pascal go one on one, it's better. It helps out. But not when everyone's thinking, okay, Pascal's about to get double and he can pass it out, but he's just not going to do nothing with it. OG can't. Break down the defense. Gary really can't break down the defense. Fred is too small, ultimately speaking. He can do a pretty good job breaking down the defense, you know, unless Scotty takes the leap. But now we're asking Scotty to take an all star leap. Like, this is an all star, like, bona fide all star leap because Pascal won't make it this year, but he's an all NBA type player. If there was a four team all NBA, he's, he's in it. If we had the 65 game mark, Pascal's in it. But I always say that random stretch was really bad. Do I think Lori Markman had that significant of a, se uh, a season than Pascal? Not really. But Pas uh, Pascal's team was so mid for so long. Like, Utah came out of nowhere and shocked people. And he was a lead contributor, uh, contributor to that. You know? And Pascal just can't make it again having a mid. I think they had a good uh, uh, record last year. But he made it over Jimmy Butler, who was the number one seed. You couldn't do that again to Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler had to had to get uh, an All NBA nod, right? I don't know. He's probably gonna get it. I'm assuming. But like that's the thing, you know. The best thing this team needs is someone who can match. I, like I said, the Chris Middleton, who Giannis is better than obviously than Chris Middleton. Giannis is better than Pascal. But if you if Pascal just had someone of like almost equal value, like a Chris Middleton. That that's good. Like that would help him. I never like some guys like Bradley Beal, like a, a bona fide bucket getter at five minutes to go can get you some buckets. That's what it is. Pascal is not, is not a number one guy, right? He's a number two, but I argue that he could be also a, a one B, you know, to a one A. And a one A to one B, it's just like Jason and, and Jalen. It's all on who has the ball rolling. At the end of the day, they do give it to, to Jalen Brown. I mean, to Jason Tatum. As they should. More dynamic score. But Jalen Brown is just as good. Right? Like, I always think to myself, if the Raptors, and I'm going on a tangent like I normally do, but I'm thinking if the Raptors had someone like Brandon Ingram with a Pascal, Brandon Ingram is not, you know, some, some will say he's better than Pascal, but I think it's because of the type of games they play, where Pascal's footwork, um... His, his, his shot creation has gone so much better. His, especially I feel like in the latter of the season, um, his like fadeaway has gone better. His uh, pull up ha got better. So I think if, you know, if he just has those consistently, like I, I believe in the shot, especially if he has someone shorter on him, it, it's almost, uh, it's becoming automatic. It's becoming automatic, I see. And that's just from the eye test. I don't know what the stats show. That's from my eye test. But that's what like this Raptors team needs. Right for the now, let me talk about the tank. I know a lot of people want to t potentially tank, and you know one thing with Raptor fans, they, they they say the word like just trade everybody. I was on the phone with a, a friend, um, like a few days ago, who uh, uh, you know knows their ball, um, 
she had said to me, you know, I think the Raptors should just like trade everyone. And I'm like, and then she knows her ball. And I'm like, nah, that's not how it works. We, first of all, you have someone like Gary and Fred, right? They are, um, uh, they're not free agents. They can either opt in or opt out of their contract. I was saying Gary should opt in. Gary, you're not going to get the bag. No, no one's paying you 20 mil. I don't see it. Unless it's a team with like ultimate cap space like San Antonio, you're not getting the bag. I just don't see it. Fred could get the bag. So Fred should opt out because Orlando would want him. Um, maybe San Antonio would want him. Uh, like A team that feels like they just need a lead guard will want him. Maybe even the Pelicans in some sense. Um, that would probably be a sign and trade type of thing. Um, would want uh, a Fred, but that's what they would be. That's what they would need. Uh, once again, in, in saying all that, you know, I, I'm not too sure if Raptor fans understand that if you lose Fred, like let's say you lose Fred, um, that money, you don't all of a sudden have twenty million dollars to use. It's not how it works. He's a part of the cap. So even with Gary, they're part of your cap. If you lose them, you don't have money still. You still don't got money because of Pirtles, cap hold. Like you have to re uh, like release these guys. You have to release Pirtle to have more money. You have to do all these things. Also with tanking, which I don't think the Raptors are going to do, unless they really said like FR 2024 pick, because Raptors fans need to realize it's top six protected. Top six is not like huge. It's not huge. Who's to say they will have the six? Houston's probably going to be just just as bad, you know. Um, I don't know. There's any other team? I think I think Houston's the one team. Detroit, I don't know what they're like. It depends where if Cade turns if they get Victor. Also depends who gets Victor, right? So it's all about like if you super tank, then yes, maybe you can get a top six pick. So then San Antonio doesn't get that pick. But you think about it, they're Masai and Bobby are planning on winning next year. You really didn't get Pearl not to sign him. It doesn't make sense. So if you are going to re-sign Pirtle, then you're still going for wins. And there's, of course, reports that, like, they're going to uh, have big changes. Probably Nick Nurse is a big change, things like that. Let me tell you. Um, we can't talk about this again. We can't be, I, I think it was, uh, um, what's his name? Stephen, uh, his, his. Twitter Stephen LeBron. I don't know why his his name is, is mistaken me. But on the Raptor show with Will Lou, you know, they were saying how the what they the Raptors can't do is be the main character again. It cannot. You guys all thought, everyone thought we're making trades this coming trade deadline. We didn't do it. I agree. I made a video about it. The Raptors should wait. Don't make any trades. Don't make desperate trades because everyone knows you're desperate. This off season. Confidently speaking, there's 29 teams that will be desperate. And it all depends on who wins the title. But trust me, every team is going to think they're going to need someone who can stop, let's say it's the Bucks, a Giannis. If it's the Boston Celtics, you can stop Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. So every team's thinking that they need a Mikel Bridges and an OG Ananobi. So those two guys are about to get traded for a lot. Because you feel like you're, if you feel like you're a piece away, you're thinking you're that piece away. You're that guy away. If it's Kevin Durant, it's the same thing. I'd say if it's the Lakers, no. You may think you may need a big for Anthony Davis, and LeBron's getting older, so you don't really care about that part as much. But you're thinking you need a defensive wing to stop these guys. I'm thinking OKC's thinking that, that Chet's coming, right? What's stopping them from going for an OG? They have the cap space. They definitely have the trade um, asset. But people who want to tank, like tank for what? Tank for what? Are you like the people who want to tank? Don't watch regular Raptor season, uh, Raptor games. You don't watch regular Raptor games. I'm not trying to tank. I'm sorry. I'm trying to win games. So whatever way we can win games, let's do it. I said we need uh, a Chris Middleton type to help uh, Pascal. I also think once again, like I have like 20 ideas. The other thing that they, they can just do is if they just focused on Scotty and, and Pascal. Give them a lot of shooters. So you, you trade like an OG for a bunch of shooters. And I, of course, I'm always looking at the Pelicans. Trey Murphy the third. That's what I want. 
right? You get him, try to get someone else. I don't know. For the draft, you want to me, there's a guy named uh, Grady Dick. He shoots the three pretty well. That's who I would want. Him or Cravante George, depending if they fall, if they actually stay 13th, that's who I want. I definitely would want uh, like a guy who can get buckets, shoot the three pretty well. I, that's that's what I'd be looking for from the Raptors. Increase the bench help. Maybe a person could eventually start. Like that's what we should be going for. But the Raptors don't have their next year pick if it falls. Like if they're trash, and like they're like not that trash, but trash. Like if they're like basically the Indiana Pacers, Indiana Pacers, unless the draft odds change, they're not gonna have a top four pick. They can have a below that. So if you go below, the Spurs take it. So you technically would want to be a good team so the Spurs can take your 20th pick. And of course, people love doing this like hindsight cash 20. Like, no, no. We probably were not going to draft a Walker Kessler. Okay? Stop that. And I'm, I argue for anyone, a Raptor fans, who was the 20th pick this season? And what did that person do? So let's chill on, oh, we really wanted this person. This person on our, was on our radar. Oh, on, no, 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 no. It's easy to say it now. It's so easy. It's easy now to say we, they should have drafted Kevin Durant. It's easy now to say that they should have drafted Carmelo Anthony. It's so easy to talk about it now. It's different. You look at, uh, I want to say the 06 or 07 draft, whatever Kyle Lowry was in. Kyle Lowry is probably the best player of that draft. Well, I'll say LaMarcus Aldridge is. But some would say Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry was 24th pick. It's two like years now, okay? Some people would now say, like, would you even draft Zion? Top four. I've heard it. I've heard it said. He has all the talent in the world, but the man's not healthy for four years. So it's easy to talk about this stuff. Some people say if they redrafted, they'll probably pick Evan Mobley over, over Cade. I'm still picking Cade. People are talking about Jalen Green horribly. It's so easy to be like, you should have done this. At the time, you believed that their talent at their ceiling would be this. So you go with the ceiling. You don't go with the floor. You go with the ceiling. You go with the floor with the, the guys probably out of the lottery, probably 20th pick and, and, and below. Mind you, I know the lottery is like 40, but I still think you still find gems, right? You still find gems a little bit after the, the lottery. But you never know. Look at Giannis. Giannis is the best player of that draft. Arguably will probably be a top 10 player when he's all said and done. The man did not go top 10. CJ McCollum was probably the second best player. Did not go top 10. It happens. Oh, maybe CJ went top 10. Now that I think about it. He could have went top 10. But it happens. So you never know. So tanking isn't the, the end-all, be-all. Getting a bunch of draft picks sometimes doesn't always work out. Doesn't always work out. Kawhi Leonard was, wasn't a lottery pick. We won a title off him. We had no lottery picks at all for that title. Doesn't always happen. I always say the number one overall pick, in most cases, doesn't lead their team to a title. Look at look at history. The last I have to think about this. The last number one overall pick again to lead their team to a title was LeBron. To lead their team to a title. Rose, of course, got injured, so that didn't happen. Bogut didn't happen. Bargnani did not happen. You know? Greg Oden, obviously, injured. It's okay, it didn't happen. Durant, number two, of course, it happened. Blake Griffin didn't. John Wall didn't. So, like, this is off, like, my brain. Like, this, these guys didn't do it. So, it's not like when you pick number one, they're going to lead. There's no guarantee that Victor's going to lead them to a title. And after um, LeBron... Iverson led their team to the finals. They didn't leave the team to a championship. So after that, it goes Duncan. Then it goes Shaq. And it goes Olajuwon. And then it goes um, uh, Magic and, and then uh, Kareem. That's what it goes for number one picks. So this is not, we've done this for 40, 50 years. Like, no, come on, man. Kareem. Then it was Magic. Then it was um, uh, Hakeem. After Magic, I would say it was Hakeem was the last guy to lead his team to a number one pick, leading his team to the finals and winning it, right? 
Yeah, Jordan wasn't number one. We all know that. It was Akeem. It was Akeem that was like that. Then it was Shaq. And then it was Duncan. So these are generational. These are top 10 players. I just named top 10 players to lead their team. So that means if Victor were to do it, he'd be a top 10 player of all time. Okay? It doesn't happen. So sometimes getting draft picks, you don't know. Our best player on our team for the Raptors is the 27th pick. And our second best player, arguably, of course, was undrafted. The guy we picked ninth that same year was the guy we traded and then traded back in in Yaka Pirtle. So sometimes it's not always what you think. When you got Yak, you thought you were getting a quality center. When you got Pascal, you thought you got an energy guy. Who knew what they thought of when Fred, oh, maybe he could be a third guard. He's an all-star, and he's like a pretty darn good player. Probably top 15 point guard in the league. So you never know what's going to happen. So tanking doesn't really make a lot of sense. No, try to be good. Now, when you see my video, you'll talk about, I'm going to talk about develop, um, development of, of players and how, honestly, this hasn't been the case. But that's what has happened. No blame, no shade to a lot, not a lot of people. But there's just this team, this whole overall season, you know, they just weren't good enough. But the one thing we should not talk about is tanking. Trade everybody. It doesn't work like that. You can't trade everyone. And if you do, you gotta trade, you gotta trade Pascal. And then you're saying that this team is going to be Scotty's team now. So then you're okay with the just not being good then. Cause you gotta trade everybody. You know, I if you are doing that to me you got to keep precious because let's see what you have in precious then but the team's gonna be horrible that means we're going for number one we're going for dj wagner the 2024 we're going for that people are saying this next draft won't even be that good people are even saying that this draft after like maybe five six guys it's not that great anyway and I'm thinking, but a draft saying top five is pretty good. So I don't know what that means. But those are saying there's no gems. There's no guys that like could be falling, but it could be something. There's no Jalen Williams. Both. Both guys. There's no like guys, rookies that you're putting a starting in a playing game. You know? There's no guys like that. So if there's no guys like that, who knows? Because after Victor Scoot, Brandon Miller... Those are the three for sure everyone believes in. Then you have the uh, Thompson twins. And then that's really like the people you really hear about the most. Legit. There's no one you're, they're, they're being spoken about. Like, there's there's no. Once again, I mentioned Kevante George. I mentioned Grady Dick. There's another guy. I believe he has like a hyphenated name that I've heard. Like, there's a, a guy with last name Black who played for Arkansas. All these guys could be good, but you don't know. You don't know if you get if you're gonna get a Paul George, right? You don't know. You don't know if you're gonna get a Michael Kill, uh, Kid Gilchrist. You don't know what you get. That's why the draft is like it's a lottery. It's like you you, you just hope this person's good. Victor is a very skinny guy. I hope this doesn't happen. But there's leg problems for a lot of big men that size. A lot. So you're hoping he doesn't end up like a Joel Embiid, especially in the beginning, or a Zion. Definitely don't want to end up like a Zion. Because well, I don't know what they're doing with that over there. They're a team that should probably tank. Some people are saying trade Zion. Honestly, tank. They should tank too. Because why be in the middle? Right? Even though I actually do hate tanking, I like, I love this season. Like, I love the parody. I love the fact that, like, yeah, it sucks for as a Raptor fan that we were 41 and 41. But honestly, Raptor fans, like, come on. The Warriors were 43 and 39. Or 40, yeah, 43 and 39. Go, um, like the, the Suns won what 45 games? Like, we're acting like teams were winning games, okay? No one s stood out, not a lot of teams stood out. I keep saying it if you're not the Bucks, um, Philly, Boston, Cleveland, Sacramento, and Denver, and probably the Grizzlies too, maybe the Grizzlies, I'm not too sure, you're pretty happy with this season, like, record wise. And uh, what has happened? Playoffs, of course, are a different animal. But not everyone else is going to be that happy. And New York should be happy too. Definitely, New York should be happy. So, there's most of the teams in the East should be happy. The West, like, cause, uh, the West is pretty mid all season, all season.
And everyone was so even. So even. But the good thing that with the play-in, kind of going to that, that still the seven eighth seeds made it. No random 10 made it. No 9 made it. 7 eighth both made it. I don't know. This Raptors season was, yes, it was not good. I definitely know. It wasn't good. This Raptors season was so bad. Um, I don't believe it was the worst because, you know, expectations were high, and I get that. I, don't, I forgot what I predicted for this Raptors team. Probably predicted fifth or sixth uh, for this team, but um, it didn't happen. But also, you have to, you have to say that the rest of the, the league was just much better as well. Much, much better. So, like, yeah. like Orlando was better. Orlando's a team you got to watch out. Indiana was better. People thought these teams were, won't be good. They were still pretty good. Honestly, if, like, the Raptors started tanking, Indiana or Orlando would probably would have been in, in the in the playing tournament. Legit. And they probably would have cared more. That's what we probably would have seen. But I don't know. That's my, like... End of the season, low key rant. You know, we lost. Uh, losing uh, 18 shots is 18 shots missed in the free throw. Um, it is what it is. I didn't even do a season in review. I'll maybe I'll do that. Maybe I won't. But I still have a lot more content about the Raptors because fun, the funny thing is, like when you're it, like this, when when it's like you didn't lose in the second round to a really good Philly or Boston team, whatever like that. Like this is like you get more content. You get more content. There's more things you got to work on. If this team was good, you wouldn't, like, Masai believes in this team. Um, that's why he said, you got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in Toronto. He believes in this team. Do I think there's going to be major changes? No, I don't. I want, I want this team to be good. I'm sorry. This whole, like, I do think you may have to let go of some of your top five guys. I do think you got to do that. Um, and, I, and I think the main one could be OG. Uh we always talk about how great of a defender he is. He is. But, like, though he's so good, people don't talk about him like that. I, I feel like people talk about him, but they don't, like, I don't know. I feel like we should be speaking about him then like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's, I feel like I've been hearing more about Jaden McDaniels recently than, than OG. You know, guy who led the league in steals. Like, we just don't, but everyone's like, oh, well, so was Gary. So was Fred. They're all top five. So, it's like, okay, I guess. OG may not even be first team all defense. Like, no one's talking about it. Even though I, I believe that OG played great defense. But I'm thinking if you want more, that's what, what needs to happen. Or you just got to get a better bench. It's like there's so much good uh, things that, that, that need to be um, happening for this team. But who knows? That's what why we have this whole offseason. That's all we're going to talk about. Ways to There's going to be like probably 20 ways to improve the Raptors and how they can improve them. Because there's just multiple ways that we can do it. Who knows? But like and subscribe. The videos are, are going to be this week as well. Enjoy basketball, guys. It's uh, it's a fun time. It's playoff time. Definitely enjoy it. I'll talk to you guys again. Peace.